Hello, everyone. Welcome to this day. It is Monday, January 23rd. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you had a great weekend. All right, we have a couple meetings to tell you about. One begins at 9.30 this morning, and that will be the third Architectural Controls and Standards Committee meeting, and that will be in the boardroom. And then this afternoon at 1.30 is the United Landscape Committee meeting, and that will also be in the boardroom. And speaking of third, we do have Jim Cook here on behalf of the third mutual board, and he is here to give us an update about what happened at their last meeting. And then we have Dr. John Hovenessian here on behalf of Harvard Eye. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our weather. Well, we're still looking at beautiful skies. Take a look at our skies today. Gorgeous. And uh, we are looking at temperatures in the 60s this week, 62.40, 60, 42, 67.44, 69.46, and 68.47. Just lovely this week. And uh, our sunrise this morning was at 6.53, and our sunset will be at 5.13. And notice that is getting later and later. And thank you to Cole, who went up to Wrightwood this weekend, and he got a little skiing or snowboarding in. Looks very nice. Uh, so if you're traveling up there, I'm sure there's still some snow left, but you might want to hurry because our temperatures are warming up. All right, just a reminder and uh, just letting you know that at our Village Bazaar that's happening on January 28th in Clubhouse 5 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., General Services will be there and they will be displaying the countertop organic collection bins that is provided by our waste people, waste management. Actually, it's not waste management, it's C, C, and R, or C, R, and R. <laughs> and they will also be giving away a few items related to composting. So uh, you can also get a few of those bags that you can see there, which uh, they really would like you to start using. So that's at the Village Bazaar on January 28th. All right, when we come back, we'll have Jim Cook with third. So stay tuned. Dr. Bobby Awadala, double board certified dermatologist and Mohs surgeon, and I'd like to introduce you to Skin Credible Dermatology and Surgery. We perform general dermatology, including skin checks, suspicious spots or moles, and other skin problems. Plus, we have the highest cure rate for skin cancer removal. Our state-of-the-art facility is top of the line with industry-leading lasers and cutting-edge cosmetic products. Our goal is to turn back the years with a natural, beautiful look. Visit our website or give us a call to book your appointment today. entrepreneur and have been struggling with staying focused on tasks. I needed something to help me with focus and memory and have found the holy grail of multivitamins. MindSense One has removed my brain fog and now I have better clarity and can focus on tasks and remember names and places much better. MindSense One helps support the eight indicators of brain health. Purchase at MindSense.info or available at these fine retailers. Dr. Farman, a tremendously generous dentist, did the work for me throughout my mouth, and I am happy to say my mouth is back to where it was, and my smile is back. We are now fully open for all your dental needs and invite you to come in and experience the brilliant smile difference. We offer general dentistry, crowns, dentures, root canals, and oral surgery, including immediate tooth replacement with implants. We are close to gate six. Welcome back. As I mentioned, we have Jim Cook here, who's with the Third Mutual Board. Well, Jim, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And uh, for those folks who don't know who you are, tell me a little bit about yourself and how long you've been here. Uh, we purchased 17 years ago. We were here for five years. And we're in Hawaii for seven. Oh. And then came back. We've been back four now. All right. Well, hence the uh, 
the uh, ensemble that you have today, <laughs> we are looking at a very fun uh, shirt. And I saw it, I went, man, he's got to be either from Florida or <laughs> Hawaii because that looks great. Well, that is, that is great. And, you know, and that perspective that you have, being here 17 years, we're talking a little bit about you know, change and evolving, and, and, and there have been a lot of changes over the years, as you had mentioned. So being one of those things is the new resident orientation. So I, I, I announce those regularly, and it sounds like it's really just for new people, but it's not. No. In fact, it's probably really good for people who have been here a long period of time to actually go to a new uh, orientation mm -hmm. just to catch up on what's going on. You know, things evolve, rules change. You know, nothing stays stagnant. Right. So to keep informed and to actually know what's going on. So many of the problems we have are with people not knowing the rules. Mm -hmm. And most of them don't want to break the rules. Right. You know, but they're just unaware. Yeah. And so if you go to a new member orientation, you know, you can catch up on okay. what's going on now. So what generally uh, is the protocol for the orientation? Like, how does it go? Is it very long or how does it go? Uh, it's generally scheduled for about 45 minutes. Sometimes oh. it goes a little longer when people have questions. There's a person that's the official person for doing the mm -hmm. uh, orientations, but we also have a board member come there and have a perspective. There's kind of a script okay. that we go through, but then can answer questions afterwards. Sometimes a mem uh, director like myself will sit in the audience and be there to answer other questions. Cause okay. Every director doesn't know everything about everything. Well, right, and you also have specific uh, committees or, you know, that would help with some of yeah, those things. Yeah, and I'm the chairman of the uh, uh, ACSC committee, so for alterations, ah. people have a lot of questions, especially the new people coming in. You know, they want to remodel, they want to bring things up to date. Mm. And so I can answer a lot of those questions. Oh, okay, great. So you did alterations yourself, I assume? Yes. Okay. Well, that's good to know because... I think we've gone over it before is when you when you have upgrades and things, certain things aren't covered in insurances and things like that. So certainly a good person to know. So moving from a single family home to a multi-family community, what tell me what that is. Well, basically people who live in single family homes that come to our community have to understand that they are giving up a lot of those rights that you have with your own home, your own property. Okay. And they need to learn to be tolerant of their neighbors. Because again, you're in a multifamily environment. You're no longer just in your own little home and your yeah. own little world. And so you have all these different rules to follow. Uh, you also have responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And so many times what happens is people will look at their escrow documents. They'll initial all those little boxes. but. You know, we're always a little bit remiss because after you've signed 20, 30 p pages of papers, you aren't really reading everything, you're just initialing. Yeah. And people really should go back over their escrow documents and see what their responsibilities are. Okay. You know, because they have signed for that, they need to understand. And so oftentimes we have people come in and they'll start to put their own plants, things that aren't allowed, yeah. and it's all in the documents. Right. You just got to know. And most people don't want to break the rules, like right. I said. Right. They just are unaware mm -hmm. because they either didn't pay attention or their realtor didn't inform them. And that's right. another thing we're trying to correct is to yeah. do some education to the realtors. The realtors that have been here for a long, long time generally aren't the problem. It's somebody who comes in here and sells properties for the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there, like you said, there are lots of different rules. And you just mentioned probably one of the main ones is planting. Uh, what are some of the other things that people might make a mistake doing, not knowing? Uh, they might try and extend their patio mm -hmm. with pavers, something like that, and then being extending it into the common area, which isn't allowed unless they get a variance. Okay. And even then, there's a lot of restrictions. We're restricted by our own rules and regulations that we have to follow, mm -hmm. but we're also uh, restricted by Davis Sterling. Right. And the statutes and things that the state of California places on us, you know, we have to work around all those different things. Okay. So the the problem is is Sacramento will make a rule. Mm -hmm. They they don't see what the 
long-lasting problem is. And we had quite a few rules that came in this January 1st that we're still trying to maneuver our way around to understand what our obligation is under those oh, statutes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the village is a unique operation. And so, of course, like you said, Sacramento might make some blanket thing and you have to work through whatever it is. Yeah, and it's not yeah. just us. It's right. all multifamily right. type facilities. Right. Anyone who has an HOA. Um, now, interesting that you mentioned, you know, board decisions are made following certain types of documents. And then you also mentioned uh, Davis Sterling. So what is Davis Sterling? So folks who don't know. Davis Sterling is basically the statutes from California that cover HOAs. Okay. And within that, we have a little bit of flexibility when it comes to common area, but we have to meet certain specific guidelines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if something's going to encroach onto common area, it takes a 67% vote of the community. Right. And that's another problem that we can hardly ever get that vote because we have landlords that are not residents. Oh, yeah. And what happens with landlords that, not res that aren't residents, not all of them, but a large majority of them, mm. especially with our monthly fees, they say, oh, well, I don't really care if the monthly fees go up, I'll just raise my rent. Uh -huh. And so when you have that kind of problem going on, it makes it even more difficult to reach those percentages to actually change some of our CCNRs. Mm -hmm. And again, we're so restricted by our governing documents that it makes it difficult to make changes. And that's right. something people need to understand that even more so in an HOA, you need to vote. Yeah. And only the people that can vote are the owners. The tenants don't get to vote. Right. So even if the tenants are concerned, it's their landlord that right. has to vote. So the right. tenants need to make their landlords understand exactly. if it's something that's going to try and keep the monthly down. Right. Because they should be aware that their yeah. landlord is just going to raise their rent. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So it's very important for anyone who is renting to pay attention to what might change because, like you said, their rent could be raised. And uh, I don't think they're going to want that. Now, coming from, uh, you know, your perspective being on a board, you know, I think every board member has a feeling or something that they want to accomplish. However, you're there for the community. So yes. what would you say to those people who are on the board and those who may want to serve on the board? Well, one of the things that's hard for people to understand is that we as board members are responsible to the corporation. Mm -hmm. We're responsible to make sure that the place stays uh, solvent. You know, we don't want to change rules, do things to where we don't have the money. The other thing is, is that the members have to understand all the money to do all the maintenance, everything we do here comes out of their pockets. Yeah. You know, that's, that's our revenue source. And so when people come and say, well, you, we want you to do this, we want you to do that, well, you need to understand that's going to cause us to raise the monthly. Right. If you don't want the monthly raised, you need to understand we're trying to do more with less. We're trying to become more efficient. Mm -hmm. There are things that we do that may not pay off for years ahead, mm -hmm. but if mm -hmm. we don't plan ahead, it'll all come to a position where we'll have to raise the yeah, monthlies. Right. And we try not to raise them, but the cost of living, inflation, right. everything that's going on right now, mm -hmm. it's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so, again, we have to try and do more with less. Yeah. And our obligation as directors is to the corporation. We want to understand and try and help the members, mm -hmm. but ultimately what a single issue item for one member may be, it isn't necessarily what's good for the community as a whole. Right. And our uh, main goal is our fiduciary responsibility to keep Laguna Woods Village afloat. So when someone has an issue and they want to bring it up to the board, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, come to a board meeting during the member participation portion. Mm -hmm. They have three minutes to state their case. Right. 
will respond to that. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, things can be handled right then by passing it on to one of the staff mm -hmm. to follow through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the requests obviously aren't going to be able to be taken care of. Right. And that's another thing is when people come in, they're a single issue item generally. Mm -hmm. And before when I was a city councilman, you know, people would come to you 99 times and you did what they wanted to do. And for their attitude, that's what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But the one time you vote no, then you're the worst elected <laughs> official in the world. And, and that's what happens with single issue. Sure. You know, we don't deal with just single issues. We've got thousands of issues we're dealing with. Yes. And we're going to committee meetings. We're trying to solve things mm -hmm. in the ACSC, the alterations. I'm slowly trying to go through all of our standards and trying to bring them all up to date, mm -hmm. try to make them uh, timeless so that you look at the standards that are today's standards, mm -hmm. what the specifications are, not what was written almost 60 years ago. Sure. And our committee works hard on that. Staff is great. Uh, I have Bart Mejia that I work directly with. Mm -hmm and we just go through things step by step by step, mm -hmm. and we still have some bugs because when it gets to the full board, yeah. ultimately we are recommending the full board is approving, right. and something we may not have seen, other members on the board might see when we get to the final sure. process. Sure. And that just happened last this month, okay. where we had a standard for, let's see, what was it? Oh, for the air conditioning. And with that standard, there were a few other items because we want to put solar on the roofs. Mm -hmm. And so on the three-story buildings, if you put the air conditioner compressor on the roof, it's in the way of the solar. Oh. <laughs> and so we had to work out some right. compromises on how we wrote up that standard sure. so that it could cover both aspects. Oh, well, that's good. But see, that, that's working as a as a board, right? That's working together, which is right. exactly what you want. And again, you know, we run by committee. So first the committee, committee recommends to the board. Mm -hmm. The advantage of the ACSC is for variances, we can approve at our committee level. Mm -hmm. But if we deny the variance, then it can be appealed to the full board. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, a very good explanation. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you again next time, I hope. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you, Jim. If you want more information about any of the third meetings, when they are or what they're covering, you can always send an email to generalmanager at vmsinc.org and it will be uh, generated to the appropriate person. We'll be right back. Who is RadNet? You've probably heard our name and seen our commercials, but you still might not know who we are. RadNet is the largest provider of outpatient imaging services in the United States, with over 8,000 employees and almost 400 imaging centers in seven states. Likely, if you have had diagnostic imaging, you have experienced RadNet's high-quality, cost-effective imaging services. With 35 years of expertise, RadNet is leading into the future with advanced technology and the very latest AI technology. We are positioned for the future of healthcare. RadNet, leading radiology forward. Welcome back. We have Dr. John Hovenessy in here who is going to share with us a new technology for dry eye. Well, welcome. How are you? It's nice to see you, Good. Lisa. Nice to see you too. And I, I read this twice because I went, wait a minute, a nasal spray for dry eye. That's very interesting. Yeah. How, how does this come about? Well, it's a little bit of a mind bender, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we have medications for dry eye. There are now three FDA approved, and this is the fourth uh, medicine for dry eye, not just lubricant drops, but medicine that we put in the eye. Um, and this one is different because we put it not in the eye, but in the nose. Okay. Well, to start with, a lot of people hate eye drops, right? Uh, and uh, they, they just, they sting. Uh, and all of the uh, commercially available 
FDA approved medicines do sting. Right. Um, whereas uh, not that putting something in the nose is, is entirely exciting for people, but it is an alternate way to do it. Right. And so this medicine, which is called Tirvaya, okay. is uh, now available by prescription. Um, okay. You get it at a pharmacy and it's designed to use the, uh, the nerves and the way they connect to the, uh, you know, to the brain right. through the nose. And, right. and I, think, I think you know if you get something spicy in your mouth or in your nose, uh, pepper, you are going to perhaps sneeze a little right. and you're also going to, your eyes are going to water, right? right? That's because those nerves are all connected and the, right. the nerves you stimulate in the nose with this medicine, not just as you put it in, but for a number of hours afterwards, okay. uh, will then stimulate the nerves that also uh, send a signal to the glands that produce tears. Right. So let's, so I know we have a, we have a slide about the glands. So. Tell me the difference between the two different kinds of glands that we have in our eyes. Yeah, well, so there's there's really um, two uh, sets of structures, and then a third that's in the uh, in the eyelid that make up the complicated chemistry of of the tears. You know, for you to see well, when you think about it, to have the the surface of the eye covered with skin that's like the rest of our skin, but specially structured to be clear, mm -hmm. and then to have an optically smooth surface, glassy smooth like a like a lens requires a water film and it okay, has right. to be beautifully smooth for us to see well and that okay. takes a lot of chemistry there's there's lipid which is like oil there's water which makes up most of it and then there's mucus that coats the surface of the actual structure of the eye and right. all three of those layers are made by different parts of the eye but um, the the helpful thing about this medicine is that it stimulates all three because when we use nerves to stimulate the tear, you know, functional unit in the eye that produces all the layers of the tears. None of the other medicines are known to do that. Interesting. That's yeah, interesting. So that what what is the activated ingredient in that? Yeah. So it is a. Um, it's called a cholinergic agonist, which means that it stimulates nerves that, uh, in this case, produce tears. The same medication has also been used as a uh, for smoking cessation, as a pill to help people who uh, who smoke to to quit smoking. Huh. Uh, Chantrix is the name of that oh, medicine. No so same medication is uh, has been used before, but obviously it's not uh, used as a nasal spray here. It's uh, right. been reformulated. Right. So um, it's it's generally fairly tolerable. It doesn't sting, although a lot of people sneeze, especially in the sure. first few doses. Sure. You put something in your nose, it does um, induce you to sneeze. Most people, 98% of people who do, say that that's pretty mild sneezing and yeah. it's, you know, okay, I, I can deal with it because my eyes are now feeling better. <laughs> well, sure. Now, how long does it last? Is it something that you, it says twice daily medication. Yeah. So, it, what, an eight hour type thing? Um, yeah, at least. I mean, it should be 12, right, if it's uh, if it's twice daily, yeah. but it's, uh, it's used twice daily and seems to... Uh, produces uh, an effect for even 24 hours with that twice daily dosing. Okay. So something you'd probably take up in the middle, uh, in the beginning of the day and then maybe late in the afternoon or oh, uh, gotcha. and in the evening. And um, uh, the uh, it is a new medicine. And anytime there's a new medicine, coverage by insurance is variable. Uh, I think we have pretty good pay, uh, coverage for people who have Medicare and secondaries. Uh, but uh, even that, depending on your secondary uh, plan, depending on the drug plan you have, it could affect right. uh, what you pay out of pocket. Okay. With time, these things always get better as drugs become, uh, you know, have an opportunity to get on more insurance plans. Right. We don't have any financial interest as doctors in this. We prescribe a drug because it's helpful to our patients. I but I bring it to you today because I think uh, our viewers are probably interested in knowing if you've got dry eye, there's a new option that's available to them. I'm wondering, um, in the studies that they did on this, does it show that after using it for a period of time, can you lessen using it because it stimulated them and now all of a sudden they're working correctly? It's a really great question and it's, uh, um, and, and generally that is true. Mm -hmm. Generally, so we find that with the other products uh, like Restasis and Lefitograst, which is Zydra, uh, and the third one, Isuvis, is really used for episodes of dry eye, so we don't use it long term. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we are starting to notice that with patients. That, oh, that's great. And, and it's simply because as you sort of exercise those tear glands and get them to work more, they respond more to a little less stimulus. Right. And so less medication, maybe once a day dosing. That's great. You're training yeah. yourself. That's great. You're training your Good. Eyes. That is that is awesome news. Well, thank you so much for the information. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's it. neat, isn't it? I mean, it so many great, great uh, developments yeah. that are always coming in medicine and in eye care in particular. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. If you want more information about this particular medication or if you have any questions about your eyes, you can always contact Harvard Eye 
at harvardeye.com or you could call them at 949-951-2020. We'll be right back. back. Our movie for today is called Hildago, and it is a very adventurous movie. You can see that today at 2 p.m. with subtitles and 6 p.m. without subtitles, brought to you by Hogue. And then we have a few announcements for you. We have some things that are coming up. We've got the Brisket Buffet. That's going to be January 23rd. That is today. And um, you can participate tonight at 5 p.m. Now it is $25 per person, and if there is room, I would get in touch with Recreation as soon as possible. Go ahead and email them or call 949-597-4382. And our other items that we have is a Valentine's dinner dance, and I'm telling you this early because the tickets go on sale tomorrow, and it probably will sell out. So you will want to get in touch with Recreation, or you can the tickets you can go to Clubhouse 5 and purchase them there. All right, let's take a look at our weather. It is going to be quite lovely this week. Not too hot, just in the 60s. We get up to about 69 midweek, but we are maintaining uh, no rain for the week. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. 62.40, 63.42, 67.44, 69.44, 46, and 68.47. And uh, you can always rewatch our program at 12.30 and 5, Monday through Saturday, or you can visit our YouTube channel, Village Television. Have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow right here on Village Television at 9 a.m. Bye-bye. California Attorney General Ron Bonta issued a consumer alert on hearing aids sold over the counter or online. Quote, while hearing aids sold online or over the counter may appear to be more cost effective than traditional hearing aids, they may not properly address your particular hearing loss needs or they may be outright scams. He goes on to say, get checked by a licensed hearing professional and beware of misleading claims. Call Advanced Ear Care today for answers on over the counter hearing aids and options. Tell them Stewart sent you. Are you or someone you know facing financial challenges from unexpected emergency expenses? The foundation of Laguna Woods Village can provide the temporary help you need. Meals on Wheels, adult day services, dental services, medical alert services, and ambulance contracts. Contact the Village Social Services at 949-597-4267 to see if you qualify. Neighbors Helping Neighbors, the mission of the foundation of Laguna Woods Village. We are the first light after a cancer diagnosis. The illuminated entry point to life-saving cancer therapies and novel treatments often sought by the rest of the world. We are a dedicated team of more than 400 physicians and 1,000 scientists and researchers. We are cancer-focused, but human-centric. We are thousands of breakthrough discoveries. We are where cancer stops. And life keeps on getting lived. The future of cancer treatment is here.